Hi guys, the Syrian army has boosted its air defences near the Israeli border and obviously this is in preparation for the offensive that may take place in the next 48 hours. So in connection with that, rebels have been issued with a 48 hour warning to accept reconciliation in southern Syria or face military action. So uh, uh, the rebel forces in Dara and al Quintura governments have 48 hours to accept the Syrian government's reconciliation offer or else the latter will begin their long-awaited offensive. According to a military source in Damascus, the rebels will be given until June 14th to inform the government of their decision. This deadline may be extended due to the large number of rebels in southern Syria. However, several free Syrian army units and their Islamist allies have already stated that, these re that they reject these terms. The Syrian army is expected to meet with the town elders and community leaders in rebel-held al Quinetra in the next 24 hours to negotiate a possible settlement, a 4th Division source told Al Mazdar News. The 4th Division source added that the goal is reconcile with the rebels in the al Quinetra government and evacuate the jihadists to northern Syria. So it's clear that this offensive is about to take place if these rebels do not accept the terms of the surrender, which is basically lay down your weapons and get out of the country. As reported already, the US militants have increased their presence in southern Syria, and on the other side, the Syrian army has also increased their presence. Turkey have just finished their border wall, explained all that, so it really does look like the tensions in the Middle East are about to you know, flare up in, in a way that we haven't seen uh, so far in this uh, seven-year war started in 2011. Then we've got more warnings for volcanoes. Uh, these are not any of the volcanoes that we talked about. This volcano, or the two volcanoes they're giving warnings for, are the, I'm not going to say it, um, I'll give it the abbreviation name, which is El Popo in Mexico, and in Alaska, Great Sitkin. They've increased the warnings to yellow, which basically means that the volcanoes are showing signs of unrest, considering the limited or no warning that we got for Fuego, um, which killed over 100 people. I would suggest people living near these volcanoes. There's not really anyone living near the Alaskan volcano, but near um, the Popo volcano, there's, you know, a couple hundred thousand people living. Um, so I would suggest maybe paying attention to the warning, um, preparing plans for evacuation if you need to, but just being cautious in general. Um, I've talked about the uh, Washington, I talked about Washington preparing another Cascadia Rising 2.0 exercise, which is due to take place in four years' time, but they started preparing for it now. Um, interestingly enough, I also reported on Arizona preparing for California earthquake evacuees. When you do look at the world map, you can see that the places that are involved in this uh, Cascadia Rising exercise are Alaska, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and then you've got Arizona preparing for earthquake evacuees. I can't find any information on Nevada, but if there is any information on Nevada preparing for disasters or emergencies, then that would make pretty much all the states surrounding California preparing for some sort of earthquake event. Now, in the Cascadia Rising exercise, the first thing they started off with was an EMP attack, um, which brought in the interoperability communication people. So, um, Thinking about that, if an EMP was to strike first um, and then a nuclear weapon into a volcano, that would mean, well, one, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center is in Hawaii. So if anything happened in Hawaii, then the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center is gone. Um, and if there's an EMP event before that, then communications are really going to be limited, meaning that the death toll would be increased substantially because there's no way to get a warning to these people um, which is why it's important to pay attention now um, even if something doesn't happen at least you'll be prepared for it if it does so just wanted to kind of bring that to the table that it may be an EMP first followed by nuclear detonation volcano earthquake tsunami and then obviously war is kind of flowing at the same time as that starting off in the Middle East and you know potentially North Korea on the Korean Peninsula, um, the US soil, the UK soil, everyone's getting involved. Um, I keep going over these scenarios because as the days go on, just more evidence seems to point towards those particular 
events taking place, combined disasters, Illuminati card game, all of that stuff kind of gets involved. Um, and then thinking on the lines of um, earthquakes, it just came to my mind this song that was released a couple of years ago um, called Earthquake by Labyrinth featuring Tiny Temper. Um, the lyrics are pretty um, closely associated with an earthquake, uh, particularly the chorus, which says, I predict an earthquake up in here. Say, yeah, I predict an earthquake up in here because we throw bombs on it. And when I was reading that today, I was thinking, throw bombs on what? What is it? Um, and then it could could be a volcano because we throw bombs on it, throw bombs on it, just smash something. I predict an earthquake up in here. So um, obviously that's not me saying that an earthquake is going to happen in any terms of prediction, but um, just thinking of the earthquake scenarios and everything else, these kind of lyrics are taking on new meaning to me. So I thought I'd just present that to you guys. But obviously the most imminent scenario is the Middle East, um, which is showing real world signs of actually escalating into a conflict that um, would see a lot of a lot of death. So you guys keep your eyes there. The volcano warnings, Mexico in particular, because a lot of people live around that volcano, pay attention to it. Um, and then just be wary that we're in a very high watch week, um, 12th of June, 11.07 at the moment. Moving on to the 13th in a couple of uh, couple of minutes for me, um, but the 15th is on Friday, and these two days are, you know, my really high watch days. Two days because of the time zone difference around the world, so could be the 14th, 15th in either location. So you guys have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and... God bless.